it's Sam here and welcome to part 3 of my Bandai Perfect Grade Millennium Falcon Commission Build Series. And if you've missed the previous two parts, I'll put a link up to the playlist in the corner there. And in this part we're going to be building the two mandibles that stick out the front and then painting them up. So uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so my plan for these parts is to build them up pretty much close to completion and then uh, paint at the end. Since they're all pretty much the same, all the parts are all the same colour which is the base coat colour, and then paint on a few coloured panels at the end. And I'll uh, paint a lot of this interior stuff before I put it all together just to make sure that the airbrush uh, gets into all the little nooks and crannies before it's um, all sealed up. One thing I love about building these Bandai Star Wars kits is that they've reproduced the detail so accurately you can actually spot um, all of the little bits of models that ILM used back in the day to build the studio models. So this looks like a bogey from an M4 Sherman or an M3 Lee stuck on the side there. And they actually used a similar part on the back of the um, TIE Fighter models. And I'm sure they've used it in other places. And then you've got more Obvious bits like this looks like half of a car transmission piece. And then I think I spotted, oh yeah, this looks like a drive sprocket from another tank. And this looks like the bottom of a, a vehicle with its exhaust system sticking out the back. And then probably a spring in the middle there. So it's just fun to spot little bits here and there, and I'm sure someone more familiar with model kits can probably spot or identify most of these pieces. So yeah, it's just a little fun game that I play when <laughs> building these. And summer's drawing to a close here, so here I am watering the chilies, and then watering my cat Rumi. Why not? He's just enjoying a bit of a cool summer splash. Alright, so I'm going to deviate from the instructions a bit. Uh, they want you to attach the internal section first, and then close it all up, and then attach all the external detail and all the pipes and stuff. But that's just going to leave it a little bit difficult to paint to ensure full coverage. So what I'm going to do is attach as much external detail as I can on these two halves. 
and then paint all of these three bits separately and then stick it all together at the end. Now although most of this kit is pushed together uh, construction, there are definitely some parts here that will need a little bit of glue just to secure them in place. Well, this tubing just wants to keep popping out. And so just a small application of Tamiya Extra Thin. We'll fix that up. Okay, so that's both mandibles uh, mostly constructed. Just get a closer look at some of this detail, which, um, as usual, by Bandai standards, is just absolutely phenomenal. Just the depth and the sharpness of all this detail. So, really going to pop when it comes to weathering. And it's a bit rattly because this is all just uh, loosely fitted. So what I'm going to do is prime all of these parts separately, so that half, this middle section, and then that half there, and then we can get on to painting. Okay, so just before I lay down the base coat, I'm going to do some pre-shading on these internal bays using um, Vallejo's light grey. And for the base coat I'm using the same mix as I did on the cockpit, 
and that's just 10 parts of Vallejo's white grey to one part aged white. Alright, so everything's had its base coat applied and given a thin coat of Tamiya's flat clear from a spray can so the paint's all nice and sealed in and so what I'm going to do now is mask up and paint the various panels So for the red panels I'm using Vallejo's Model Air Fire Red 71084 For the bluish grey panels, I'm using Vallejo's Model Air Dark Ghost Grey 71120. And for the warmish grey panels, I'm using Vallejo Model Air USAF Light Grey 71121. Alright, so that's the panels painted. Just have a closer look at the red. And it was a bit messy around this raised area just due to the difficulty of masking that shape. But I'll, I'll use that as part of the chipping when I apply that later on. And the back piece I'm not so worried about because that's going to be covered mostly by the hull. And there's the different coloured grey panels. And these little indents in the armour plating. I just cleaned up with just brush painting the um, base colour just to clean those up. It's a pretty simple job. And one thing I haven't talked about is the actual mix of this base colour, the whitish grey, with the aged white. It uh, takes a hell of a long time to dry for some reason compared to the other colours. But I'm not sure if that's just due to the colour or the chemicals in the paint. Although I think Vallejo white does take a long time to dry as well. I mean, it takes. About a week or two to fully dry, compared to some of the other colours which can only take a few days. So um, that's just one thing to be aware of if you're going to be using this mix. Um, and that may change the structure of videos in the future. I may just construct and paint large parts um, earlier than planes just to let them dry as I put them aside and then work on other bits and then come back to them later. So I'm not sure what the next video will be at this point. Um, but uh, there will be another one, so keep an eye out for that. And I was planning to put all, all of these mandibles together at the end, but having a fiddle with these parts, um, it's going to be quite difficult to weather these recessed bays once they're all behind the piping. So I'm just going to leave it all separate for now. And then when I come to do the weathering, I'll be able to get into here and weather these up properly before attaching them. So um, I apologise if that's a bit anticlimactic at the end. Not seeing them all put together, but um, you'll see it eventually. And yeah, so uh, I hope that's been informative or enjoyable to watch. And it might not be as eventful as the cockpit, but um, yeah, it's uh, like I said, the structure may change. I was planning to do separate sections and paint them all up in each video, but as I said, the paint, because the paint's taking so long to dry, I'm going to have to change it up a little bit, so... Keep an eye out for what's going to be coming next, but you can always, always follow the build on my Instagram or Patreon page um, outside of the videos, so you can see small updates and things that I'm up to, so I'll put a link to those in the description, and uh, so you can go check those out. So until then, thanks for watching, and take care.